It has been a very long night here in Spokane County. Um, I am Sheriff John Knowles. We are here holding this press conference to talk to the public about the status of uh, the fires here in Spokane County, and in particular, uh, the Grays Road Fire. I'm gonna turn the time over now to Chief Cody Rohrbach from uh, Fire District 3, who's gonna talk about the condition of the fire right now. Yeah, so as you know, Gray Road Fire started yesterday, just afternoon around 1224. Uh, southwest of the city of Medical Lake, approximately three miles. Uh, initial attack resources arrived on scene to a uh, fast-moving wildfire in wheat stubble on a uh, on a steep steep side hill. Fire spread rapidly with the extreme weather conditions. Really, really strong wind gusts, uh, single-digit uh, relative humidity. So, just very challenging conditions yesterday, and of course the. Uh, the hot temps so fire spread rapidly uh, to the northeast towards the city of Medical Lake as well as the DSHS Department of Social Health Services campus and then uh, fire fire continued to spread right into the community of Medical Lake fire ultimately made a almost seven mile run to the east coming up uh, directly to the community of Four Lakes on the far eastern side uh, conditions remain extremely active overnight with very low relative humidities, uh, strong winds, and extreme fire behavior. Uh, we had hundreds of resources engaged from across the county, uh, multiple agencies, law enforcement, Department of Natural Resources, uh, fire districts from across the entire county represented here yesterday. Uh, and amongst that uh, initial attack effort, we also had state mobilization approved, so incoming resources from across the state. Uh, but hundreds of firefighters out there overnight uh, engaged in a very active uh, firefight. Their priority has really been life safety, ensuring that we get our community out and then trying to do point protection around the homes. Uh, of course, a, a lot of homes that are within the fire perimeter um, fire is currently estimated at 8,000 uh, plus acres. Uh, we'll have we'll have a more accurate mapping hopefully later today. Um, but as you can imagine, given the uh, location of the fire, a lot of structures within the perimeter. Uh, we have just some preliminary counts this morning um, from our division uh, that's up uh, in the Medical Lake area. They're reporting 185 structures lost at this time. Uh, so significant structure loss, but I would also add that the, uh, you know, the firefighters, uh, you know, in coordination with law enforcement, have, have also saved uh, many structures and got a lot of a lot of community members out as well. So they continue to work really hard. But challenging conditions overnight. The fire turned and then pushed to the uh, southwest overnight with a pretty good wind shift and pushed uh, pushed across Interstate 90. Fire is now established south of Interstate 90 along the Salnave Road. Uh, very active this morning. A lot of firefighters uh, down in that down in that area, uh, trying to provide point protection around the homes and construct control lines. Any any questions? Uh, just with today's weather, you know, what are what is that going to look like um, when public fighting this fire? Are there any challenges that you're concerned about? Yes, there's some there's some challenges. There's also some good news. So with the predicted winds out of the north northeast today that helped secure the northern uh, perimeter we had you know of course all the values associated east of four lakes east of the community of medical lake with more favorable winds pushing the fire back to the southwest it helps on that end so particularly the communities of medical lake uh, west uh, west medical lake four lakes road it's it's going to help firefighters to secure those lines there's still a, a lot of work in there there's still a lot of hot spots um, some active burning interior. They're going to try and secure those lines. So that's the good news. The, the challenge in the news is on the opposite side of the fire, on the southwest, down near uh, the interstate section of Interstate 90, Salnave Road. Fire's very active on both sides of Interstate 90, going up towards the south end of Clear Lake to the north of I-90, and then uh, pushing all the way along. Um, Salnave Road from Interstate 90 back to the east, all the way uh, back to Granite Lake. So the big thing that we're getting a lot of questions from people about, and I know this is a hard one, but specifically the Eastern State Hospital area, and there was a nursing home or an elderly uh, facility that had some people in it. Do you know anything about 
the evacuation that took place there was National Guard able to get to, I believe it was a Lakeland Village home? So we have Lakeland Village is, is protected as well as Pine Lodge, Eastern State Hospital, and uh, that, that was coordinated well. We actually ran a simulation for an event similar to this the, the day prior uh, to the event. So uh, we were thankful that that was rehearsed uh, prior, prior to the event. It happened to be well-timed. So good, good coordination. They had their IMT members out on the ground coordinating with, with our folks. And so we can certainly attribute the uh, positive outcome there to good, good collaboration and coordination. Congresswoman, if we can bring oh, you in. We, oh, oh yeah, yes, yes, we're yes, gonna yes. go. Yes. So uh, a couple things that, uh, that I'd like to talk about very quickly. We still have level three evacuation areas several places throughout the county. What we are asking citizens to do today is, now that the sun's up and people wanna get back in their homes, please continue to respect those level three evacuation areas. As Chief Warbach uh, talked about earlier, there are still active fires burning in those areas. We have people trying to come into those areas. When people come in and put themselves at risk, we have to shift our focus from clearing areas, making it safe for the firefighters to go in and do their job and removing citizens. We then have to shift our focus to addressing people inside those areas. We've seen reports of citizens bragging that they're able to get beyond uh, scene and, and security lines to come in and check on their, their loved ones or their animals or their, the status of their homes. I ask, please don't do that. It makes our job that much harder. We will let people know when it's safe to come back into their homes. City of Medical Lake, there's not power in many places and, and we know that we're, we're asking them to boil water. It's not a great place to be right now. It's not a safe place to be. Um, there's been a lot of devastation in those areas. We will let people know when it's safe to come back in. So please, not just here uh, west, but in the North County fire as well. We need citizens to please make our job easier. The men and women of the fire service, the men and women of the police department, the sheriff's department from all across the county have been working very hard, very diligently. Our resources are stretched. We need the public's assistance in making our job easier. I have to thank the, the men and women of the fire service. They've been amazing. Uh, the men and women of law enforcement, the Spokane County Sheriff's Office, Medical Lake, uh, City Administrators, the City of Cheney Police Department, Airway Heights Police Department, Spokane Police Department, Spokane Fire Department, they have been fantastic. And, and the men and women are doing exactly what they're trained to do. So we're just asking for the public's cooperation in helping us maintain a safe place. For people who might be worried about the condition of their homes, we have patrols going on in the evacuated areas to make sure that no other crimes are being committed. So make sure we are doing everything we can to keep those areas secure and to keep people's belongings safe. Let's not add us having to keep people's lives safe um, unnecessarily. So that, that's a request from me. Um, I will turn the time over here to Commissioner CUNY really quick. I have asked the Board of County Commissioners to declare a state of emergency here in Spokane County. And I'll have her speak to that. So, yeah, so I'm Mary CUNY board chair for county commissioners. I also have Commissioner French, this is his district, who's been here, you know, tirelessly. So we will be at noon declaring a state of emergency here in Spokane County, so that way then it will allow us those opportunities for other resources to be coming into the county um, to help. And I just want to say thank you to law enforcement and to the fire departments, the first responders. They are crucial. They are getting stretched thin, as we all know. And so just um, thoughts and prayers are with all of you and our community right now. Right. Um, this has just been a tremendous response and, and coordination. Um, just really grateful to everyone, both at, within the city of Medical Lake, the county, led by Sheriff Knowles, and all the first responders, the firefighters that were on the scene due to this terrible fire. And, and it's one where uh, there's in the state of emergency and then uh, the state will uh, do their role and as the, the representative as the representative for this district I'm here to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to help from a federal perspective the time will come when we will be seeking that support also I was going to ask you that so I know you're really familiar you're crucial in getting them all connected with the finish line obviously we're not anywhere near that being needed to be implemented right now but does this from your perspective federally make you go I need to push the White House for funding it, absolutely. There, there's going to be a role for the federal government in helping support and provide the resources necessary to those that have been impacted in the rebuild. 
Right now though, we have to keep our, our focus on actually uh, fighting the fire and taking the appropriate steps, uh, doing the assessments uh, and these, uh, the, the state of emergency that Spokane County will be declaring is an important part of that, as well as the state and then the federal government will come in with more resources. Can I add one more thing, and then Absolutely. Commissioner French, I don't know if you want to speak, but uh, one thing I forgot to add. There are going to be folks outside um, of these areas of people who have left who are going to wonder about the status of people that they can't get a hold of, people um, that maybe lived inside the burned area. What we are asking folks to do is, if you are aware of somebody who lived there uh, in the area of this fire who you can't get a hold of, we're asking that you call Crime Check make a missing persons report and that is the most effective and most efficient way for us to get those people who we need to be uh, aware may be still in the area and get resources to try to locate them. So that is something that's very critical, very important, call Crime Check, make those reports. Thank you. So this is one of those events where the community really has to demonstrate a love for each other and come together. There are a lot of folks that are going to be displaced out of their homes or uh, have other um, uh, challenges created by this event and so take care of your neighbor uh, you know if you can volunteer at the Red Cross or any of the other for your church this is the time to step forward this is our Spokane that uh, we love each other and we'll take care of each other thank you do you guys have immediate assistance right now for people who did lose their homes so we, the Department of Emergency Management ha, uh, is working on all the logistics going forward right now. We have uh, you know, places for them to be through the Red Cross at the Spokane Falls Community College, uh, but we will be bringing those resources to bear over the next couple days uh, through the state and other resources. Um, I, and I can say I had the opportunity to drive through parts of Medical Lake last night. It is, uh, uh, I don't know if incredible is the right word, um, devastation that happened in inside some of those areas uh, I've, I've never seen anything like it in my entire life uh, and so again this this has been a, a terrible event uh, but again we can we will recover from it but it's going to take time and it's going to take a lot of cooperation from not just all of our resources but from the public as well just my final question is there an area where people can make donations I know a lot of people are wanting to bring feed for livestock mm -hmm. do we have that Okay. Correct. All donations, please go through the American Red Cross right now for that. Uh, we do have locations for large animals, and, and uh, we have set up for all of those eventualities. But please, any donations, please to the Red Cross. Do not, um, you know, take physical donations to uh, command posts or things like that. Um, it's best to send through the Red Cross. Right now. Any other questions?